Hello. So in this section, I would talk about blood salvage technique or cell salvage technique, which is one of the way of surgical blood conservation. So what is this surgical blood conservation technique? The surgical blood conservation techniques are the techniques which we use to prevent the patient's exposure to allogenic blood transfusion. And there are various way of doing the surgical blood conservation of it is blood salvage technique. Uh, so, what are the ways of surgical blood conservation and uh, do uh, if we use the multiple way of uh, surgical blood conservation with the practice of pre-op optimizing the patient to minimize the transfusion requirement, definitely the exposure of patient to allogenic blood products would definitely be reduced and the risk associated with allo allogenic blood transfusion will be reduced and there would be a better outcome in our patient. So, we need to know about these blood conservation technique and in this section I would talk about one of the technique that is cell salvage or blood salvage technique. But what exactly is your blood conservation strategies or blood conservation techniques? Now, these are the techniques which prevents the patient's exposure to allogenic blood products during and after surgery, right? So, blood or surgical blood conservation technique, surgical blood conservation, conservation techniques, whichever we are practicing, reduce patient's exposure, patient's exposure to allogenic blood transfusion and definitely to the complications of the allogenic blood transfusion during and after surgery, during and after surgery. So, throughout the perioperative uh, time period. So, there are actually three techniques. First one is preoperative autologous blood donation in which the patient themselves donate their blood in pre-op period right certain time period before the surgery before they undergo surgery and if in intra period the blood transfusion is required their own blood is transfused to them the second technique is acute normovolumic hemodilution in which in the ot after the induction of the patient amount of whole blood of the patient is removed and it is replaced by crystalloid or colloid to maintain the normovolemia during the acute period when we are expecting the blood loss to happen. And once that acute period goes away, the, the blood is kept there in the operating room itself, it is retransfused to the patient. This is acute normovolemic hemodilution technique. And the third technique which we are going to discuss in this section is blood salvage technique. Now, this is the technique in which throughout the surgical procedure, the blood of the patient is salvaged, the blood which would be wasted is salvaged through a blood salvage machine and it can be used for giving a huge amount of blood, a large amount of blood in intra-op and in the post-op period if properly stored, right. So, we can use it for intra-op and we can also use it for post-op period till 6 hours after collection of the blood, uh, right, if we are storing it properly. So, first technique, there are three ways I said. The first one is preoperative autologous donation. Preoperative autologous autologous donation. Now gradually this is going out of the practice because of some issues associated with it. What are the issues? In a moment I will talk about. Then acute normovolumic normovolumic hemodilution. Hemo dilution. Now, this is again a technique if it is practiced with other techniques, a uh, requirement of allogenic blood transfusion would massively reduce and the technique which we will discuss in this section is cell salvage or blood salvage we call it or blood salvage technique, right. Okay. So, why this preoperative autologous donation is gradually going out of the practice. Now, why this is this seems a good technique, patient's own blood is collected, kept and if required for transfusion it is given to the patient. Now, this technique is going out of the practice gradually because one of the reason is that in the
patient in whom the pre-operative uh, pre autologous blood donation has, is being, has been practiced, studies have shown the requirement of transfusion, intra-op transfusion has increased in them. Then when you collect the blood, then the storage and preservation of the blood has to be done similarly as you do it in allogenic blood product collection. So, risk of infection, risk if properly not uh, uh, collected and properly not stored would remain there. So, a lot of the risk which allogenic blood transfusion has, autogenic blood transfusion or autologous blood transfusion can also have, right. Then uh, with proper blood management strategies, uh, the requirement of intra-op blood transfusion has been minimized nowadays. So, lot of pre-op autologous blood which was collected required to be discarded historically and this was a practice which was not which, uh, which was not liked by most of the clinicians and the patients. Then this is again a high cost, I mean a cost, uh, 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 the technique which requires uh, a pretty high cost to maintain the blood of the patient. Right, and crossover transfusion has been uh, eliminated. I mean, we cannot go for a crossover transfusion. That is, if patient is not you, uh, the autologous collected blood of the patient is not used by the patient, it requires to be discarded. We cannot use it for other patient. So crossover has been eliminated. So again, this pre-op autologous uh, blood donation is going out of the practice. So as I said, that uh, why, why? Pre-op, pre-operative, autologous blood donation has is going out of practice. Is going slowly out of practice. Slowly out of practice. What are the problems associated with it? What are the issues associated with it? So, issues which are associated with it. Number one is greater likelihood of transfusion required in the patient who is undergoing this technique. Number one, greater studies have shown greater likelihood, likelihood of transfusion requirement, transfusion requirement in patient undergoing this technique, patient undergoing this technique, right. The second issue is that the lot of practices which we do, the blood management strategies has reduced the requirement of transfusion. So, likelihood of wastage of the collected blood. So, reduced transfusion rate, reduced transfusion rates with blood conservation or blood, sorry, blood management strategies, blood management strategies, right. So, this leads to the high rate of preoperative autologous collected blood to be discarded, preoperative autologous donated blood to be discarded, to be discarded. And studies have shown that collected blood in many conditions was discarded and this was not liked by the clinicians and the patients. Then the next problem is that increased cost of collection and preservation, increased cost of collection and preservation, whether required or not required, the blood was collected and it had to be preserved for a certain time period. Then your potential complications of blood transfusion, some of the complications of allogenic transfusion would also have in this. So, potential complications, right. Then your Elimination of crossover, elimination of crossover, that is the collected blood cannot be used for other patient, it had to be discarded. So, all these issues are eliminating the preoperative autologous donation, practice of preoperative autologous blood donation, right. The other technique that is acute normovolemic hemodilution, what as I said in this technique, after induction of anesthesia, in the operating room after sometimes after induction of anesthesia, a certain amount, a certain unit of blood is removed. One unit means 450 to 500 ml, 2 to 3 units are removed, maximum 4 units and it is replaced by the crystalloid or colloids and when this acute 
period of surgical blood loss is goes away then the blood is retransfused it is kept in the operating room itself right so acute normovolemic normovolemic hemodilution hemo dilution so this is a blood conservation technique in which is blood conservation technique in which that in which that uh, requires that requires removal removal of whole blood whole blood from the patient from patient after induction shortly after induction shortly after induction right so after induction we remove this blood of the patient and we infuse we give same volume of crystalloid we give crystalloid we replace it by the required crystalloid and or colloid crystalloid and or colloid right so normally 2 to 3 unit 2 to 3 unit of the blood is removed and one unit as i said one unit comprises of 450 to 500 ml of the volume and maximum we can go for four units so by this technique we can conserve maximum i mean say if it is 2 to 3 units maximum we can conserve 2 liter of the blood so if this technique is practiced along with other techniques the requirement of allogeneic transfusion would definitely be reduced if properly practiced so what we are going to talk today in this lecture is blood salvage or cell salvage technique we'll talk about the uh, indications the contraindications and the technology behind it okay so blood salvage blood salvage technique okay blood salvage technique now this blood salvage technique this can be used for throughout the periop the intraoperative period this can be used throughout the intraoperative period or perioperative period to transfuse patient huge amount of blood in a short time period during the surgery and even some time after the surgery if we properly store the salvage blood uh, properly store it in a proper way the salvage blood we can use it 6 hours also post op the uh, in the post op period so blood salvage technique can be used can be used throughout the surgical procedure throughout the surgical procedure to conserve the bl blood throughout the surgical procedure to rapidly provide to rapidly provide a large volume of washed blood a large volume of washed autologous blood autologous rbc units right rbc units so what are the indication of this technique where do we practice it definitely we will practice it in the major surgical procedure which require in which the huge blood loss is expected so the first indication is in major surgical procedure major surgical procedure right so in the procedures where we are expecting more than 1 liter that is 1000 ml of blood loss there is a strong suggestion that if the technology is available we should use it right for more than 1 liter of blood loss we are expecting now between 500 to 750 ml right we can it can be reasonably used in some patients where the allogeneic blood transfusion should not be used or is not cannot be used any reason so reasonable in some patient reasonable in some indications in some patients for some indications for more than 750 for more than 750 ml now this more than 1 liter it's a strong suggestion the society mostly uh, different societies they give a strong suggestion that we can use it for more than 750 ml blood loss expected blood loss can we use it or we cannot use it now this is a threshold at which many centers practice and can be used right so this threshold is also which many centers practice above 1 liter there is a strong recommendation above 750 ml 
whether we should use it or we shouldn't use it well some centers use it now it depends upon their own like uh, uh, ways of blood salvaging and how much they are confident in it etc so this can also be the threshold for the blood salvage technique to be practiced now this whatever i have talked about the recommendations now these recommendations are based on evidence that allogeneic transfusion and associated complications can potentially be avoided or minimized when intra op blood salvage is used with low incidence of adverse events so a lot of studies have compared that even with 750 patient in whom we are expecting let's say 750 to uh, more than 750 ml blood loss if we go for autologous blood transfusion then the overall morbidity and mortality would improve in the patient then this technique is used effectively in various elective and emergency major surgical procedures especially number of time in emergency procedures with some modification in the techniques where when the blood is not available this technique can be very very useful including cardiac it has been used for cardiac surgery major vascular major orthopedic trauma transplant now all these surgical conditions the huge blood loss is expected right so it has been used for multiple procedures for Uh, let's say for blood as a blood conservation technique the blood salvage technique so the first indication is wherever we are expecting a huge blood loss in a major surgical procedure like cardiac orthopedic trauma etc now the